Welcome to the latest Libertas video. Today we're going to finish up this Bayek Left Gauntlet from Assassin's Creed Origins. Now this has been our running series taking this gauntlet everywhere from the template to its final form. So in the previous video we did finally affix the brass plating to the gauntlet and also added in these nice red and blue details. And we use beads for those. Um, so that's looking really good. I like the way that it turned out. And today what we're going to do is finish up by painting on the hidden blade or painting up the hidden blade and then affixing it to the gauntlet. So for this we're going to be using a silver spark, um, these metallic luster paints. Um, they'll be a link in the description below. But we're going to be using the silver to get the base of the blade or the, the housing for the blade. And then we're going to use this ice espresso to go over it with um, on the blade as a base. And then we're going to finish up with the gold rush on top of that. Hopefully that's going to give it somewhat of a nice distress look and then match it up a little bit more with what we have with this top plate. So looking forward to it. I'm really excited to see this thing finally complete. So let's get started. And that's it, we have completed the Bayek Gauntlet from Assassin's Creed Origin. So let's take a quick look at it. Um, I have the hidden blade shot out right now, so let's put it sideways. Um, as you saw with the painting process, went pretty smooth. Um, the silver, of course, was super easy to do. Um, I've done it in the past. And then also with the, the hidden blade itself, I started off with that espresso, metallic espresso um, look, and then I went with the gold rush. And the Gold Rush was a little bit too much of a mustardy brown for my, my own taste. And so when I put it on, it was just a little too, I don't know, just not what I was looking for. And I would prefer this to look more like a almost a blade that was forged out of bronze. And so that's why I went back with a little bit more espresso. Then I had to go back with some more Gold Rush because I lost a bit of what I was looking for. And then just a tad bit more of espresso. So the whole process, you know, kind of going back and back forth just to make sure I got what I wanted. But at the end, I think it looks really good, even though it's not 100% to, you know, the brass. Um, I think that's okay. I think the, the bronzy look looks uh, pretty cool. Now, one of the tips that I do have, and I've said it in previous videos with my other hidden boys, but if you print these in black, you get a natural distressing once you start applying the paint. And so as you see here, any of the areas that I really didn't fill in completely, you get that nice weathered look. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, and overall, this gauntlet has been, you know, definitely a completely new challenge um, between working with three different types of leather. We got the thin leather, we got the suede, we got the double oak, um, which is the thicker leather. Um, we put brass plating on, which is the first for me, put these beads on, which was another first. Um, that was really cool. Really all the types of, you know, segmented armor, the buckle system, a lot of this was brand new. Um, and so learned a lot through this entire process, had a lot of ideas for going forward with new projects. Um, and I really like how it turned out. I loved it when it was just a fully leather gauntlet and I really like it now that it does have the brass on there as well. And if, if, of course with the hidden blade on there. Um, one of the cool things that I did with another tidbit um, <laughs> is that this, I used the longer Chicago screws to attach the hidden blade. I had made the holes to fit these perfectly and 
Um, I use the longer ones because then it allows it to raise off just a bit off the gauntlet itself. So it allows the leather to still retain some flexibility and conform around the arm while this, uh, you know, the plasticky printed material um, is far more rigid. So it can't really, you know, flex with the arm um, the way that the leather does. So that allowed the best of both worlds. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, so yeah, overall, this has been completely uh, a new challenge for me. And I hope it has been inspiring to you. I hope you have some, you know, through this entire series, some desire to go out there and, and build something yourself. It um, doesn't have to be this exact gauntlet. But if you wanted to do something similar, I know I've been putting the, the links in the description of all the, the resources that I've used on this gauntlet. So, you know, you can check those out. And hopefully, I know it's not been a step-by-step -step tutorial, but it hopefully gives you a good base of going, okay, I have a good idea of how I can build a gauntlet. This is by no means the perfect way to build one. Um, this is just the way that I've been doing, and I, I like it. I think it's good. It's functional and fits my arm really well. So really happy with the end result. Um, and like I said, I hope you're inspired to go create something yourself. So that's going to do it for this gauntlet. Um, we'll probably do one last kind of quick look, the more traditional Libertas video style. We'll get some nice close-ups with the, a little bit better of a camera than the GoPro. Um, get a little close up on the details and kind of go through the thoughts of the entire project. But for now, that's going to do it for this vlogging series. Um, we'll get on to the next project and we'll see you on the next Libertas video. Mm -hmm.